Welcome to the Addiction Connection podcast, connecting the hope of the gospel with the heart of addiction. I'm Mark Shaw. I am joined. You forgot my name. You need sleep. <laughs> I need sleep. That's so funny. CJ McMurray is the co-host this time. How about that? You're not a go- guest. You're I'm a co-host. live and in color. Yeah, I mean, we're together. This is really rare. Yeah, this rare. is like photo cropped or no, yeah, yeah. photoshopped or yeah, photo cropped, can... whatever that word is. <laughs> You're really here. I can touch you. All right. So we want to talk about sleep. And um, what inspired this was an article I read in the LA Times uh, from 2013, actually about Michael Jackson. So we'll get into that in a minute, but let's start. If you would read Psalm 127, sir. Gladly. <coughs> the whole psalm. The whole psalm, the whole five verses. All right. <laughs> At least it's not Psalm 119, right? That's right. That's right. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. Now, in context, I mean, the the Lord's building the house. He watches over the city. Uh, It is in vain that you rise up early, go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. Right. A gift. It is a gift. It is a gift. In the middle of all that's going on in the world, the Mm -hmm. watching, the anxieties, the, Mm -hmm. you know, and as I was reading this story about Michael Jackson, he was being sleep deprived and they gave him propofol. And that's technically the drug, I think, that they said that he, he died from, he overdosed on. But what's interesting in this article, and, and we'll, I'll, we'll link the reference in here too. You know, the article is by Jeff Gottlieb in June 21st, 2013 from the LA Times. And he says that propofol brings a drug-induced coma that is far different from sleep. So man concocts drugs and things that put you in a coma, Mm -hmm. but being in a coma is not the same as getting restful sleep, according to this guy. Now, you know, this is an MD, and and MDs are not perfect, Um, but he says not only... On the article, it says, not only does it not satisfy the body's need for sleep, it dissipates the sleep drive, leading to a massive sleep deficiency. So the doctor says, not only is it not giving you restful sleep, it actually creates a, a, um, a desire for more sleep because you're actually being deprived sleep. Even though you think they're getting rest and sleep, they're, they're not in a state of rest. And, and so... Um, He says, this is what I believed happened in the case of Mr. Michael Jackson. So Michael Jackson died. He couldn't find rest. He couldn't find sleep. He's turning to drugs and different things, and and medical doctors are trying to help him to get sleep, but they're putting him in a coma, which is different than sleep, actually hurting his sleep. So I think it's important to note in this podcast that – not all drugs are remedies for what man thinks they might remedy, you know? And in this case, it's so sad, a talented person like Michael Jackson, and I I don't want to get into all the, I don't know enough about Michael Jackson. This isn't about him, Um, but he's a well-known person who is pursuing sleep. And I want to emphasize the word of God here, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. He, He gives us, it's a gift. Right. And there are times I can't sleep, and I know many of you. I'm never up at night thinking about how awesome my pickleball game went and how great I'm doing, and I can't sleep because I'm, I'm so fired up. I generally can't sleep because I'm concerned about something, or maybe that's concern ter- that turned into worry. 
Maybe. And into Maybe. fear and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And I'm not laying there thinking, oh, man, I had a great day. And this is great. I'm usually sitting there laying there thinking, oh, man, I can't believe I've got this thing coming up or that thing coming up. And, you know, and, and in those moments of anxiety and worry, I'm not trusting in God. Mm -hmm. I'm not allowing him. And I'm not saying, oh, trust in God, and you'll get sleep. That's, that's not what this is saying. Um, but it is saying um, that I want to ask God for the gift of sleep. And whether Michael Jackson was a Christian or not, my, my indicators are that he wasn't. I, I don't know. Right. I don't know. And finally God knows. And, and, you know, he, I know that wherever he is now, he would want us to know that the Lord Jesus Christ is the one true God. Yes. You know? Yeah. He is Lord. He, Lord of all. He's Lord of all. And Michael Jackson knows that today. Right. He might have been the king of pop on this earth, but he's met the king of kings. Right. And, um, and he knows what we don't know because he's on that side now. Right. And so it's urgent that people turn their lives over to Jesus Christ. But I, I, I think, you know, a lot of times I don't ask God for sleep and rest. Mm -hmm. And I'll be quick to turn to a, a substitute, a medication, a thing that might provide some drowsiness and sleep. Um, but I, I need to turn to Christ. I need to trust Christ more is the call here. We're not giving formulas for sleep or for this or for that. That's not a, this isn't a self-help kind of thing. This is a call to greater faith in Christ, greater trust in Christ so that, that you can rest knowing, you know what? The King of Kings, he, he loves me. Yeah. He's sovereign. I can rest on that. Yeah. He, I can cast my anxieties, mm -hmm. my cares on him, on my anxieties on him because he cares for me. He mm -hmm. loves me. He loves you. And whatever he's bringing or allowing into my life, it's for my good. It's for my sanctification. It's to help me to grow into Christ's likeness and to trust him more and to glorify him more in everything I do. Oh, that's good. No, that's good. I think that rest is probably, it's, it's a topic that maybe we don't talk about enough. Mm. And I think uh, it is, like you said, it's, it's a gift. He gives, he gives his beloved sleep. And we mm. know like it's, it's actually, it's something that we have to have. Like we don't yeah. do well. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, we just don't do well uh, without sleep. Yeah. Uh, whether that's, I think of people that don't sleep because they're on drugs, whether that be street drugs or, yeah, or uh, medications, but they, they, they don't sleep well because of those things. Again, a lot of times too, I think there's anxiety and all those things tied into it. Uh, there's heart issues tied into it. But I mean, I think of, my even I was just thinking when we were getting ready to talk about this topic, I was thinking about my before I came to know Christ and I struggled. With, I like to go fast, mm -hmm. so I used drugs that would make me have energy, mm -hmm. and and I would stay up sometimes the long periods of time. Uh, and I'm you know not boasting in that it was really dumb. I don't recommend that you mm -hmm. do that at all. Uh, but. But How long did you stay up? There, there was one time where I stayed up for thirteen days in a row. Wow! Uh, and no, it, drug induced, drug induced, yes, yeah. meth methamphetamine mm -hmm. would keep. I would just, I kept using it, and thirteen days. I mean, I can't imagine. And and and, wow. you, and then you start to wonder why. I mean, yes, the drugs themselves played a the part. But just being up that long played a part in my behavior, my paranoia, mm. my my thinking was not clear. I was yeah. seeing things and hearing things that yeah. wasn't, that just wasn't there. It wasn't sure. a reality, Yeah. but it was a reality to me because I was sleep deprived. And mm -hmm. I know, I think it's, it's a combination of the drugs that were in my system, but also I've seen people and heard people that have, that struggle with sleep that they'll, and they don't use drugs at all. And they've stayed up, you know, two or three days and mm. they don't think clear, clearly. Yeah. It's that's we're, what we're, medical professionals say. I think it's three days without sleep and you're going to start hallucinating just like you would if you took LSD or, or something like that. Yeah. You, you would start to hallucinate and hear voices and that kind yes. of thing. So importance of sleep. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good. I mean, I mm -hmm. think of, of the, I, we just, we need, well, and I think of even my own, I, jo I sometimes joke around with people because I'm only 
47 years old, mm -hmm. but I joke around and because I'm like, I have a lot of gray hair for a 47 year old. Uh, some, <laughs> some guys, you know, don't have as much. And so I, I say, well, in many, and I, I don't joke with everybody like this. It's not really a joke. It's kind of sad, but in some ways I, when I think about my days of being, mm. staying up like that, I lived because I wasn't asleep. I lived a, you know what I mean? When you yeah, sleep, you rest. You've lived I've more. lived longer in some yeah, ways. Yeah. Because or awake. I've yeah. been awake, alert, and I wasn't getting the proper rest. Oh. And I think that can age you. Yeah. When you're not you you see somebody that's just not getting good rest. Mm -hmm. You can just kind of see they're just yeah. not very with they're not very alert. They're maybe a little short. I get kind them. of grumpy. Yeah, right. Part of it. But I do think there is when you know I'm where you're going. I'm glad you shared that because I think those 13 days where you're awake. In you know by chemicals, you were kept awake by chemicals. You weren't at rest. No, no. you were awake. You were moving. You were going, going, going. It was not good. I mean, you could have had an untimely death. You're hallucinating. You could have hearing voices. I could have ran into someone. But you know, just me driving out. I was oh, I was not yeah safe. Yeah, for myself or anyone else. I know times that I stayed up late. I would hallucinate sometimes driving on the interstate. I thought I saw people walking across the. Interstate. They weren't, there weren't any, it wasn't anybody there, but I hadn't slept in so long. I began to hallucinate and see things. And so it's just so, we're so fragile. Yes. It's the grace of God that we're alive, yes. you know, and yeah. he, he keeps us. But now I don't have guilt. I don't have shame. I don't have those things that plagued me before. I can rest knowing I'm forgiven. I'm going to, when I die, I'm going to be in, in heaven. I'll be, you know, in the new heavens, new earth with God forever. He provides, he cares for me. He's a good God. That's something that I can just rest in and, and enjoy this life. Even the toils and the struggles around me, I can enjoy what I'm doing because I know I'm doing it as unto him and he's got it. And my days are numbered. I need to make the most of them, mm -hmm. but that's out of love for God, not out of duty. I got to earn it. I got to keep my salvation. I, I don't have any of that. I'm at rest. Amen. I'm in my Sabbath rest. And so we celebrate the Sabbath now on the first day of the week. It used to be they celebrated the Sabbath at the end of the week right. because they were looking for Jesus to come. Mm -hmm. Once he came, then we celebrate it on the first day of the week. It's a, it's a new tradition now. Celebrate the Sabbath in the beginning mm -hmm. because the rest of the week, we we're actually you know resting in our faith and our right. in God ultimate rest is so in yeah so we get that day of rest on the front end of the week because Jesus has come Amen. it's it's awesome so Amen. well thanks CJ thank you guys for tuning in I need a nap <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of ready for a nap speaking of this yeah we are getting getting tired we're wearing down that's good God's gonna give us rest Amen <laughs> can't wait yeah isn't it funny though and I don't know, real quick though remember yeah. when you were a little kid. And you hated naps. My grandson, oh, oh he hates naps. And yeah. like, we tell him, oh, you're going to love naps. When, now yeah. when you're older, you're like, you yeah, love yeah. <laughs> The right. older you get, yeah. the closer we get to yeah. the end, yeah. we know, we're like, oh, rest yeah. is good. It is There's good. a time where it's like, no nap, no rest. It is, yeah. Uh, and, I, and I think, again, with us being an addictions, uh, addiction ministry, you're turning to a chemical and it's not even giving you sleep. It's actually causing more problems. Oh, yeah. And so you have to be careful with any chemical, any drug you put in your system. Yes. A lot of people are so it's not, pro. It's not going to give you the rest. That they're you're they're so for. pro melatonin. And uh, uh, there's another one I can't. They, I lost them. My, my people are turning to, to herbs and meds and things that, you know, and, and maybe some of them are natural. I hope so. Um, but, man, they're turning to chemicals a lot of times that, that actually work against them. Um, the the Xanax, uh, you know, benzodiazepine family of drugs and uh, um, that kind of thing. It's just sad and scary to me. So before you just turn to that, how about let's, let's turn to Christ and find natural ways for him to give us rest. And maybe there is something that you need to talk to somebody about that you're anxious about. Yeah. It's totally, totally possible. We're not, again, we're not given a formula for rest. We're just saying, consider, consider going to the Lord, going to Him first and, and asking Him to, to help you to walk by faith and to give you rest. Amen. All right. Well said. Thank, thanks for tuning in. Take care and God bless.